morning everyone, Mark the Movie Man here. We're starting off Shark Week. Not quite a six pack, but close. Today we're going to look at Shark Night 3D. Now Shark Night 3D stars Sarah Paxton as Sarah, who her, uh, with a group of her friends, go out to her parents' house, which has this big, huge mansion on an island in her hometown. Well, she reluctantly returns to this hometown where there is a lot of baggage and things she tried to forget, and they go out to the island to just have a fun summer weekend. Well, this fun summer uh, party soon takes a turn for the worse when they find out their sh their lake is infested with a variety of different species of sharks for some reason. And so we see these brilliant college friends uh, handle this situation and try to get off the island that has no cell phone reception, nor does it apparently have a radio. Meanwhile, Sarah's dealing with some old hometown baggage in the form of her uh, ex-boyfriend love interest, if you will, and she's dealing with her own tra trauma from when she got hit with a propeller, apparently. Though you can't really tell except for like this, that they shaved off a little section of her eyebrow, I think, for the scar. Okay, you can't really tell, but it doesn't matter. It adds to her trauma for not enjoying being out on a lake where they decide to go to have fun. Yeah, you can see all kinds of things wrong with this film. It tries, don't get me wrong, it has heart, and it's trying to be something a little different in the shark genre, if you will. But the plot is so all over the place, and the dialogue is written so horribly that, y you know, you just... <sighs> It's hard to really get by it, even for a B-movie horror fan. Now, I enjoyed Piranha 3D, and I was kind of hoping we were going for that vein. But if you watch enough of these films, you can tell which ones take themselves way too seriously and which know exactly what type of film they're making. And in this case, Shark Knight 3D really takes itself a little too seriously. You have your my two minority characters in here who, uh, you know, just... I, they're they're yeah, so stereotypical. It, it was sad to see. And then you've got the classic guy who loves the girl but doesn't want to admit it, and the girl who's hesitant because of you know trauma with her last boyfriend. And then you got the classic hometown girl who left her small town so everybody's resentful for some reason that she went off to college type of storylines. I mean, you've got like eight different things going on. It's like they came up with these ideas and then they're like, hey, let's link it together with people getting eaten by sharks, okay? Uh, and the opening scene, I, I was like, wow, it's like Jaws and it literally shot for shot type of look to it. So... You know, Shark Knight 3D, it, it tried, but it took itself way too seriously. And when you get to the end, to the twist of why things are and why these sharks are here, it gets even more unbelievable. To the point of, yes, I know, it's suspension of disbelief, it depends on the film you're watching. But in this case, man, it's just... You're, the only belief you'll have is that you actually sat through the entire film. And the fact that they made it PG-13 is just teasing you out there, but never really delivering on anything that would possibly save this film from uh, a, a, being a total just, you know, just... Uh. I gave it one and a half stubs. There was a dog in here, and you cared a lot about the dog. You wanted the dog to survive. Didn't give a rat's ass about everyone else, but the dog, hell yeah, the dog needs to survive because you gotta have someone to attach yourself to, and it might as well be the dog because no one else is really worth the time. And that'll about do it for us here at the Final Cut. Till next time, keep that ticket stop.